Hello students, welcome to Affairs Cloud. My name is Vikas. We have an app by the name Careers Cloud which you can go and download through Play Store. Once you have downloaded the application, you will be able to easily log in using your Gmail ID. Once you have logged in, you will be redirected to this page where you will be getting this UI and there will be option for home, all courses, my courses and doubt section. On this application, you will be getting multiple PDFs, multiple content on daily basis that will be enhancing your learning. Our first segment is daily current affairs. We make sure to provide you current affairs on daily basis in both English as well as in Hindi content. The PDFs for the same are uploaded on our application. And apart from this, we also make sure to provide you with quizzes that will help you to revise the content after you have gone through the PDF. Next comes our weekly content. The content is also provided in both English as well as in Hindi. And here we also make sure to provide you quiz also of that past week's current affairs that will be enhancing your learning as it is a compilation of the important topics, important MCQ questions for the last week. Similar for the monthly, the PDFs are very important. They provide you insights of various topics as well as we also make sure to provide you the quiz of monthly questions that are very important for learning. Next, we also provide you with important PIB articles on daily basis so that you can go through these particles and have an insight about that particular topic. Not just this, we also make sure to provide you important events that are happening globally and make sure to give you the right analysis. One of the most important segment of our application is that we make sure to provide you with the correct exam analysis. When you are having exam, we make sure to provide you with the previous year questions so that the student can go through the exam pattern and the syllabus and can prepare the exam accordingly based on the pattern. After the exam, we also make sure to provide you with the exam analysis. Then for the students who are preparing for state exams, they will be also beneficial here as we will make sure to provide with state wise current affairs for them. Apart from this, we also make sure to cover the topic wise current affairs such as your national affairs, government schemes, international affairs, banking and finance, economy and businesses as these are the topics from which the examiner definitely asks the question and these are covered on the monthly basis. So friends, do check our application. It will be a one stop solution for learning. Apart from this friends, Carrier Scout is hiring. We are looking for candidates for subject matter experts in quants reasoning and English and also we are looking for a content creator for current affairs topic on daily basis, weekly basis and monthly basis. There is also an opening for a person who can translate the English content into Hindi. If you want to apply, you can scan the code here for further details or you can go to the description and click the link below. These positions are available both in full time and freelance for serious candidates. Hello everyone. So in this video, we will be discussing important current affairs for 13th, 14th and 15th of April. Session will be quite interesting and important. Do take notes of all the important points that we will be discussing today. Let's start. First is which organization has launched Girl Empowerment Mission? G.E.M. Girl Empowerment Mission, right? So a new edition of the Girl Empowerment Mission was launched by recently by NTPC that is National Thermal Power Corporation right and they have launched their latest edition of girl empowerment mission and this is the flagship event that comes under their corporate social responsibility CR, CSR initiative right under this NTPC CR, CSR initiative this gem new edition of girl empowerment mission was launched and under this gem it is expected that around 3000 underprivileged children at various 42 locations of NTPC will be benefiting under this and a total of 10,000 girls will be benefiting under this girl empowerment mission. As the name suggests itself empowerment, this is basically to help women rise in order to help women gain employment, right? So that they can also earn their livelihood and they don't have to be dependent on any individual. Also, this initiative, Girl Empowerment Mission, this is in line with the Government of India's mission that is Beti Bachao, Beti Padhao campaign, the aim of which is to basically empower girls to help them grow, correct, and tackle the gender inequality that is rising. 
here you can see ntpc formerly known as national thermal power corporation they have launched this gem that is latest edition of girl empowerment mission under their corporate social responsibility initiative and here you can see till date 7424 girls have been benefited from this program with participation increasing annually and in 2023 2707 girls have joined the workshops at 40 ntpc locations across 16 states in india this girl empowerment mission started in as a pilot project in 2018 with three locations and has experienced expanded national wide right that means first launched as a pilot project that means on a trial basis in 2018 then it was expanded nationwide and it was initially launched as a pilot project in three locations correct and despite of the challenges during the covid 19 pandemic girl empowerment mission continued to offer various skills so that the girls can become job ready and they don't have to be dependent on any individual correct if we talk about ntpc ntpc we just saw national thermal power corporation this is a cpsu that is central public sector undertaking that comes under the ministry of power right and this received maharatna status in the year 2010 who is the chairman and managing director of ntpc gurdeep singh headquarter it is in new delhi and it was established in 1975 correct next okay and then we just saw that there was a campaign of government of india that was beti bachao beti padao what was this beti bachao beti padao initiative this Beti Bachao Beti Padao initiative was launched in 2015 in the month of January and as the name suggests Beti Padao Beti Bachao that means we need to educate girls right so that they can become job ready also they don't have to be dependent on any individual for their life correct so Beti Bachao Beti Padao initiative correct and this was launched in 2015 correct and it was launched in Haryana correct take a note of this important next next news is 4.2 trillion needed in investment to close the development financing gap in sustainable development goals as per the report released by un desas fsdr 2024 we know that climate change is happening right we know that the level of carbon dioxide or we can say the level of carbon in our environment in our atmosphere is rising day by day correct we are seeing that more coal is being burned to generate thermal electricity we are seeing that more and more pollution is rising day by day correct so if we want to achieve the sustainable development goals right and if we want to achieve in the desired time frame then a report was released recently by united nations department of economic and social Affairs, that is undesa this was the ninth edition of this report as you can see here fsdr report financing for sustainable development report 2024 correct this was based on the theme financing for development at a crossroad and as per this report in over to overcome or basically to close the financing gap it is estimated that 4.2 trillion dollar is needed in investment to close the development financing gap in the sustainable development goals correct and it was before covid 19 it was close to 2.5 trillion dollar that was needed this was the financing gap but now in 2024 and this ninth edition of this report it is 4.2 trillion dollar right we need this is the necessity right we need to shift our economic transitions for achieving these sustainable development goals we are talking about sustainable development goals right first to see what are these sustainable development goals there are 17 sustainable development goals first is poverty second zero hunger third good health and well-being fourth quality education fifth gender equality sixth clean energy uh, clean water sanitation affordable and clean energy decent work industry innovation infrastructure reduced inequality sustained cities and communities then responsible consumption and production climate action life below water life on land peace partnership now you must be seeing here that not all of them are related to climate change but most of them are related to climate change right and 
if we work on climate change then most of these sustainable goals will be achieved apart from this we have to work on poverty how poverty we need to provide better education and provide job opportunities to the individuals right then for zero hunger we need to provide right amount of food to all those people who are living below the poverty line who cannot afford good or who cannot afford food on daily basis apart from that then life in blue water right we need to make sure that our water bodies are clean because nowadays we have seen that microplastics are being found even in the blood streams of newborn babies in india or uh, globally so if it is found in the blood of the newborn babies in the womb of the babies or uh, mother then these small microplastics they are spreaded everywhere and it is a very dangerous sign for our climate even we have seen lot of waste is being disposed of in water bodies which is not good for the ecosystem for the animals for the water body species that are living under water right so as coming back as per the report if we want to achieve our sustainable development goals in the desired time the financing gaps needs to be achieved that is 4.2 trillion 4.2 trillion dollar need to be spent on investment in various fields in these 17 fields in order to achieve our sustainable development goal and this was released in the 9th edition of this FSDR report that is based on financing for development at a crossroads right then apart from this remember as per it it overcome the clo or close the development financing gap and estimated 4.2 trillion investment are required and if we talk about before covid pandemic it was 2.5 trillion dollar if we look at some of the highlights the report advocates for financial system that boost our investment in sustainable development goals and adapt swiftly to the crisis financing gap were substantial even before 2020 but grew significantly due to covid-19 pandemic and subsequent shocks that followed then rising debt burdens and borrowing cost are the major contributors under uh, undoing the development process especially in the poorest nation and debt servicing cost for least development countries are estimated at 40 billion dollar between 2023 to 2025 and up over by 50% that is by 26 billion dollar from 2022 what is this debt servicing basically when these developing countries for example if we take about the case of pakistan and sri lanka these countries were facing huge crisis two or three years back right so these countries needs to take loans from the developed countries or from the developing countries right so in that case the debt on these countries increase and most of the amount this earn by tax or any other means is spent on the debt servicing by giving back the amount they borrowed right so it becomes very difficult for these least development countries to spend on these sustainable development goals because they are not even to their country is not even to provide the right amount of food also to their citizens so moving on apart from this remember if we talk about who developed this report this report is jointly produced by the members of iatf that is inter agency task force on financing for development correct it is comprised of more than 60 un agencies and organizations correct and along with andesa this report was released moving on then here only remember you can see world bank imf world trade organization unctad right undp all these program all these organization contributed in making this report moving on apart from this we can say the report points to the un summit of the future in september 2024 as a crucial opportunity to change course it highlighted fourth international conference on financing for development which will be held from 30th of june to 3rd of july 2025 in spain as the critical moment for countries to commit to closing the sustainable uh closing the development financing gap and invest in achieving sustainable development goal the report forms the basis of discussion at the un economic social council forum on financing for development where the member states discuss measures necessary to mobilize sustainable financing so we will be looking out for this date 3rd of july 2025 right from 30th of june to 3rd of july 2025 in spain we will be watching about and we will be definitely discussing about this fourth international conference on financing for development and we will be sharing what are the important sites that came out of this report or this meeting 
Moving on, if we look at some of the recent related news on 31st of Jan, India contributed 32.895 million dollar, that is close to 273 crore rupees to the UN regular budget for 2024 and earned their spot in the honor roll of UN for 2024. So direct question, India contributed how much amount? India contributed 273 crore rupees to the UN budget. Then coming back next news. On 12th of Feb 2024, the first ever State of the World Migratory Species Report was launched at the 14th meeting of the Conference of Parties to the Convention on the Conservation of Migratory Species of Wild Animal. Right, this is also known as Bonn Convention. This was launched in, uh, this was held in Samarkand, Uzbekistan, where this first ever State of the World Migratory Species Report was released. Correct. It was released during Bonn Convention and Bonn Convention is also known as CMS COP 14 that is Convention of Migratory Species of World Animals. Correct. Moving on. Next news is which bank has partnered with FIS DOM to offer stock broking services and 3 in 1 account services. So which is that organization tell me or which is that bank it is Karnataka Bank. Right, Karnataka Bank, this is a leading private sector bank and they have partnered with FISDOM in order to offer stock broking services and 3-in-1 account services that is saving account, DMAT account and trading account services that is your 3-in-1 services. Correct, this will be done through their mobile application that is KBL Mobile Plus. This is the mobile banking application for Karnataka Bank. Correct. So coming back, it is Karnataka Bank. Karnataka Bank. They partnered with FIS DOM, and it is to offer stock broking services and three-in-one account services. That is your saving, DMAT, and trading account services. Right. Take a note of this. And if we talk about this Fistom, what is this? This is a digital wealth management platform. This is a digital wealth management platform. Right. Next. Next is CAMS. CAMS is your Computer Age Management Service Limited. This is the India's largest mutual fund transfer agency and they have received the RBI's approval, NOD means approval to operate as an online payment aggregator. Correct. So CAMS, that is India's largest mutual fund transfer agency, they received this authorization or they received this approval from RBI to operate as an online payment aggregator. Correct. And this CMS, they approved this in principle authorization from RBI and this was under the guidelines on regulations of payment aggregator and payment gateway guidelines that was issued in 2020. Correct. Then apart from this and here CMS, they received this payment aggregator license under which act from RBI. So this was under the PSS Act of 2007 what is pss it is your payment and settlement system act of 2007 under this act cms cams they got the rbi's approval to act as a payment or online payment aggregator moving on next is according to moody's analytic forecast india's gdp will be growing by how much percent in 2024 so according to moody right moody's analytic forecast india will be growing by 6.1% in 2024, right? Take a note of this. And here you can see, as per the Moody's analytic report, that is APAC outlook, listening through the noise, India's GDP is expected to grow by 6.1% in 2024. That is a decrease from 7.7% growth recorded in the year 2023. If we talk about some of other points here, remember the report mentioned that the output in India remained 4% lower than it would have been without the COVID-19 pandemic. And as per the report, for this South and Southeast Asian region will witness some of the strongest output gains in 2024. The report estimated that the overall Asia-Pacific region will show a growth of 3.8% in 2024, whereas the global economy will be showing a growth of 2.8%. 5%. And the report highlighted that there is more uncertainty for China and India in terms of inflation. And if we talk about inflation, RBI projected that the retail inflation rate will be 4.5% in fiscal year 25. Right? Moving on. Next. Next is name that Indian microbiologist honored with John Dirks Canada Gardner Global Health Award 2024. So who is that Indian microbiologist who was honored? with this John Dirks Canada Gardner Global Health Award 2024. So the right option here becomes Indian microbiologist Gagandeep Kank. 
right let me show you she is the person Gag dr gagandeep kang right and she is the toronto based gardner foundation correct the toronto based gardner foundation honored the indian microbiologist and virologist gagandeep kang correct as you can see her in the picture and she have been honored with john dogs canada garden global health award 2024 why was this this was for her contribution in the global health research global health research right for her global health research correct for her contribution in this field she was honored with john dogs canada gardner gardner global health award correct and she is the first indian woman to get this award this is also becomes important first indian woman to be honored with this john dogs award here you can see what is the reason she was honored for her extensive cohort based epi epidemiological environmental and clinical trial research on antarctic diseases in children and their effects on life courses correct so for this she was honored with this award and this was a part of the 2024 canada gardner award which celebrates the world's best biomedical and global health researchers right if we talk about gagandeep kang she is an adjunct professor at christian medical college in velour tamil nadu then she is also the director of enteric diagnostic and genomics and epidemiology at bill and melinda gates foundation that is an ngo of microsoft's founder bill gates and her wife uh, and his wife melinda gates then she has contributed to the development and introduction of two indian rotavirus vaccines that is rotavac and rotacil into the national immunization program correct so she is gagandeep kang and she was honored with this award that is john dugs canada gardner global health award and this was for her contribution towards global health research and she became the first woman to be honored with this award right next if we talk about john dugs canada award right this award is annually awarded to the researchers who use rational scientifically based research which has improved the health and well-being of people who face health inequities across the globe and if we talk about this canada gardner award the gardner foundation was established in 1957 with a donation from the philanthropist james a gardner it is a non-profit organization that recognizes outstanding achievement in biomedical research wo uh, worldwide and canada gardner award has been annually presented by the gardner foundation of canada since 1957 next next is name the mathematician who won acm am turing award so acm is your association for computing machinery correct acm has named israeli mathematician and computer scientist avi wigderson correct with the acm am turing award take a note of this also remember this award is known as the nobel prize in the field of computing i repeat this acm am turing award this is known as the nobel prize in the field of computing right this is for the year 2023 he was honored with this award let me show you him in the picture mathematician avi wigderson right he won the turing award for advancing computer algorithms with randomness correct and acm that is association for computing machinery has named israeli mathematician and computer scientist avi wigderson as the recipient of 2023 acm am turing award which is often called as the nobel prize of computing correct also remember he is a herbert h mass professor in the school of mathematics at institute for advanced studies in princeton new jersey usa and what is the reason for the award he was recognized for foundational contributions to the theory of computation correct including reshaping the underline of the randomness in computation and mathematics and for his intellectual leadership in theoretical computer science he was honored this and this award carries a cash prize of 1 million dollar right apart from this if we talk about this acm am turing award this award was named after alan m turing who was a british mathematician who is considered as the father of modern computer science the award recognizes the significant contribution to the computing field since the establishment in 1966 it honors computer scientists and engineers for creating systems and theoretical foundations crucial to the advancement of it 
and it is ACM's most prestigious award acknowledging lasting and substantial technical contributions to the computing field. The financial support for the award is provided by Google Incorporation. Next, next is central government has appointed Ashish Kumar Chauhan Shridhar Vembu as the member of UGC for the next three years. I repeat, Department of Higher Education that comes under the Ministry of Education has notified the appointment of Ashish Kumar Chauhan correct as the managing director and CEO oh, sorry Ashish Kumar Chauhan who is the current MD and CEO of National Stock Exchange and Shridhar Vembu who is the CEO of Zoho Corporation as the member of the UGC that is University Grant Commission for the period of next three years right so first of all remember these two appointments Ashish Kumar Chauhan and Shridhar Vembu as the member of UGC for the next three years apart from this it has also appointed Retired Professor Sachininda Mohanty, who is the former Vice Chancellor of Central University of Odisha, and Professor Shashikala Gulabrao Banjari, who is the VC of the National Institute of Educational Planning and Administration in New Delhi, as the member of UGC for another three years. So, four person totally has been appointed here. Correct. That means under the total number of UGC were four, they have been increased to eight. And who are the four members we are talking about? Ashish Kumar Chauhan, Shridhar Vembu, retired professor Sachaninda Mohanty and professor Shashikala Gulabrao Vanjari. So these are the four members who have been elected as the member of UGC and the term here will be for the next four years or oh, sorry next three years right take a note of this. If we talk about UGC here University Grant Commission this was formed under the sergeant report this sergeant report came in 1944 right and UGC when was this established in 1956 University Grant Commission was established one thing remember here Sridhar Vembu who is the CEO of Zoho Corporation he was honored with Padma Shri that is the fourth highest civilian honor in India and he was honored for trade and industry in 2021 coming back to UGC remember UGC who is the Chairman here of UGC, MJ Kumar and where is the headquarter? It is in New Delhi. What is MJ Kumar? That is Mamidala Jagdesh Kumar. Moving on, next news. Who has been appointed as the interim president of Vietnam? So, Wo Thi and Zuan. Wo Thi and Zuan was appointed as the interim president of Vietnam. Correct? Take a note of this. And remember, Wo Thi and Zhuang, she will succeed whom? She will be succeeding Wo and Thuang, correct, who resigned from the post of president on 20th of March 2024, correct? And she has been serving as the president of Vietnam since March 2023, right? Before this, Wo Thi and Zhuang held the post for interim president of Vietnam in January 2023. Correct. Here you can see. Let me show you here. She is Wo Thi and Zhuang and Vietnam's Vice President Wo Thi and Zhuang who is 54 years of age was appointed as the interim president of Vietnam on 21st of March. Take a note of this. Right. And she will serve as the acting president until Vietnamese National Assembly elects a new president. Apart from this, also remember previously in 2021 to 2026 term. Wo Thi and Zhuang held the position of interim president of Vietnam in January 2023. If we talk about Wo Thi and Zhuang, right, she hails from Thin Bain district of Anjiang province of Vietnam. She is an alternate member of the 11th party central committee of the Communist Party of Vietnam that is a member of the 12th and 13th party central committee and the delegate to the 14th and 15th national assembly. In April 2021, she was elected as the Vice President of Vietnam at the age of 51 becoming the youngest Vice President of Vietnam. Who is the Prime Minister of Vietnam? Pham Min Chin. Capital is Hanoi and currency is Vietnamese Dong. Moving on. Next. Next is who took office as the Prime Minister of Iceland? Tech, as you can see in the picture. Who is he? So, Jarani Benedictson. Right, the chairman of Iceland's Independence Party took office as the Prime Minister of 
आइसलैंड टेक अ नोट ऑफ दिस एज यू कैन सीम इन द पिक्चर हे इज जरानी बेनेडिक्टन करेक्ट एंड ही बिकेम द प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ आइसलैंड एंड ही टुक ओथ और टुक द ऑफिस ऑन नाइन्थ ऑफ अप्रैल ही सक्सीडेड होम ही सक्सीडेड Catherine, correct? Who resigned as the Prime Minister of Ireland to run the President of Ireland, uh, Iceland? Correct. Coming back here, you can see Jarani Benedictson has been appointed as the new or the appointed as the next Prime Minister of Iceland. Take a note of this. And Catherine, she resigned from the post of the Prime Minister so that she can contest for the President of Iceland. Next, next. Remember, if we talk about Jarani Benedictson, he has been serving as the Minister of Foreign Affairs since October 2023. He has previously served as the Prime Minister of Iceland from January to November 2017, and Catherine has been serving as the PM of Iceland since 2017, and she also resigned as the chairperson of the Left Green Movement. Correct. If we talk about Jarani Benedictson. He started his career as the district court attorney in 1998. He was first elected to the Icelandic Parliament, Althingi, as a member of South West Island in 2003. Next, next we are talking about acquisition and mergers. So in the same international holding, they have acquired 60% stake in Invesco Asset Management India. Directly remember this in the Sin International Holding Limited, that is the Mauritius-based investment holding company of Hinduja Group. They acquired 60% stake in Invesco Asset Management in India, and this IAMI Invesco Asset Management India, this is the domestic arm of USA-based global investment management firm Invesco. The acquisition is the part of agreement to form a joint venture in which IIHL will hold 60% and IAMI will hold 40%, and both will have sponsor. Status and IIHL. This is the promoter entity of Indusind Bank, the fifth largest private bank in India. Next, next we are talking about science and tech. Here, Russia have launched first Angara A5 heavy lift space rocket from Vostokhony Cosmodrome. I repeat, Russian space agency Roscosmos. They have successfully launched the first Angara A5 space rocket, and it was launched from Vostokhony Cosmodrome in the. Amur region of Russia. This will replace Proton M as Russia's heavy lift rocket, which has been in operation since the mid 1960. So a new heavy lift space rocket was launched, and it is named it is named as Angara A5. This is a heavy lift space rocket. This will replace Proton M, and the rocket was launched into space, reaching more than twenty five thousand kilometer. Per hour speed in just minutes, right? And the rocket successfully placed the payload into low Earth orbit. If we talk about it here, you can see Angara A5. This was launched ahead of the celebration of Russia's Cosmonaut Day on 12th of April, which marks the 63rd anniversary on the day of which Soviet Union's Yuri Gagarin became the first man in outer space. Also, Yuri Gagarin on board the Vostok 3K A, that is Vostok 1 spacecraft, that was launched from Baikonur Cosmodrome on 12th of April 1961. If we talk about Angara A5, this is a 54.5 meter three-stage heavy lift space rocket weighing about 773 tons. This is capable of carrying payload up to 24.5 tons into space, and the rocket uses oxygen and kerosene as a fuel instead of toxic. Hypothyl making it more environment friendly than its antecedents. Correct. So also remember, if we talk about this question, can be asked that Angara A5 heavy lift space rocket is of which country? It is of Russia. Launched by which space agency? Launched by Roscosmos. Next, next is. If we talk about this project Angara, Russia conceptualized the Angara project in 1991 after the breakup of the Soviet Union, right? And here you can see the Director General Headquarters, and it was established in 1992. Who is the Director General of Roscosmos? Yuri Ivanovich, and headquarters is in Moscow, Russia. Next, next is Israel. Israel has deployed Sea Dome defense system for the first time. See, remember, we know that there is war going on between Iran and Israel now. Iran have launched multiple attacks on Israel, right? Multiple drones, multiple missiles were fired recently. So coming back for the safety, Iran, uh, for the safety, Israel, they have deployed Sea Dome defense system for the first 
time correct and it was where deployed where in the islet that is the southernmost city of the israel correct what the sea dome does this is basically an air defense system correct this will help in order to shield against the rockets missiles drones that are being fired towards israel from any other country and this sea dome defense system this was developed by the state owned defense company rafael advanced systems limited and this is an air defense system that you need to remember that is sea dome next we are talking about badminton india's anupma and tharun has won the single title at the kazakhstan international challenge 2024 first of all remember this kazakhstan international challenge 2024 was held from 2nd to 6th of april in 2024 and let me show you all the winners here men single title won by won by indian badminton player tharun he is from india then women single title won by anupma upadhyay from india for men double title here lucas corvi and ronan labar of france has won the men's double title women single title won by kaho osawa and mahe tanabe of japan and max double title won by wong ten shi and lim shui sen of malaysia correct so these are the winners of the kazakhstan of the kazakhstan international challenge 2024 right next next is when do we observe international day of human space flight so international day of human space flight is observed on 12th of april right when do we observe this on 12th of april and it is to basically celebrate the beginning of the space era for the mankind correct and remember this uh, let me show you here that will become more clear un international day of human space flight observed on 12th of april and it is to celebrate the beginning of the space era for mankind and this course a pivotal role of space and science technology in advancing the sustainable development goals and enhancing the welfare of nations and individuals right and we know that nowadays space sector is becoming one of the most prominent sector even elon musk is aiming to go to mars because of which he is developing so huge rockets such as your falcon heavy rocket right falcon 9 rocket right these boosters are the rockets that will be carrying human population to the surface of mars or to another planet right so space sector has become more interesting now and that is the reason one of the reason we are focusing on international day of human space flight observed on 12th of april for the first time this day was observed in the year 12 uh, 2011 on 12th of april if we look at back 7th april 2011 un general assembly adopted the resolution and declared 12th of april every year as the international day of human space flight and first ever international day of human space flight observed on 12th of april 2011 11 this year 2011 marked the 50th anniversary of the first ever human space flight and the 50th anniversary of the first session of the committee on peaceful use of outer space next why 12th of april because on 12th of april 1961 the first human space flight was carried out by the russian cosmonaut yuri gagarin of the soviet union and yuri gagarin orbited the earth once on a vostok 1 space capsule the first ever crewed spacecraft in 108 minutes and landed near the russian city of saratov moving on next some of the key milestone space exploration if we discuss is sputnik 1 the first ever human made satellite that was launched onto outer space in 1957 then russia's valentina Tereshkova became the first woman to orbit the earth in 1963 and American astronaut Neil Armstrong became the first human to set foot upon the surface of the moon in 1969. Next comes your International Day for Street Children observed on 12th of April. I repeat I repeat International Day for Street Children this day is observed on 12th of April and to raise awareness about the challenges faced by millions of children that are living on the streets worldwide. The theme here of the International Day of Street Children is belonging. Twenty twenty four theme centers on fostering a sense of belonging for street connected children within their communities, countries, and cultures. Next, if we talk about the Convention on the Right of Children, in nineteen eighty nine, world leaders made a historic commitment to the world's children by adopting UNCRC, that is United Nations Convention on Rights of Children, that is an international agreement on the children, and this entered into force on two September nineteen ninety. 
correct and the convention defines everyone under the age of 18 as child and this became the most widely ratified human rights treaty in history and has helped transform the lives of children around the world so friends these were your important current affairs for the day now here are one of the most sought section of this video that is one-liners so let's start ntpc has launched new edition of girl empowerment mission 4.2 trillion needed in investment to close the development financing gap in sustainable development goals as per andesa's fsdr 2024 report karnataka bank partnered with fisdom to offer stock broking services and three in win account services cams they have received rbi's approval to operate as an online payment aggregator Moody's Analytics forecast India's GDP to grow by 6.1% in 2024. Indian microbiologist Gagandeep Kang honored with the John Dirks Canada Gardner Global Health Award 2024. Mathematician Evi Vigderson has won 2023 ACM AM Turing Award that is also known as the Nobel Prize in the field of computing. Then central government has appointed Ashish Kumar Chauhan Sridhar Vembu as the members of UGC for three years. Next, Jarani Benedictson took office as the Prime Minister of Ireland and PM Catherine has resigned as she will be contesting for President. Next is in the Sind International Holding, they have acquired 60% stake in Invesco Asset Management India and they will be forming a joint venture here. Russia, they have launched first Angara A5 heavy lift space rocket from Vosconi Cosmodrome in Russia. Israel deployed Sea Dome defense system for the first time and it is because of their safety and it is because basically Iran and Russia, Israel are now in a war. Iran has fired multiple rockets, missiles towards Israel. For badminton, India's Anupma and Tharun has won the single titles at the Kazakhstan International Challenge 2024 and International Day of Human Space Flight observed on 12th of April and International Day for Street Children observed on 12th of April. So friends, these were your important current affairs. If you like the session, do hit the like button and comment below and let us know what are your views for the same. Now let's move to some revision part that will be very beneficial for your learning. Who was appointed as the Prime Minister of Palestinian Authority in March? So Mohammed Mustafa was appointed as the Prime Minister of Palestinian Authority in March. He succeeded whom? He succeeded Mohammed Satya. Mohammad Satya. Next, in March, Prabhavo Subianto was elected as the president of which country? He was elected as the president of Indonesia. And he is scheduled to become the eighth president of Indonesia. And he will succeed whom? He will be succeeding Joko Widodo. Next, which of the following organizations along with Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation have recently pledged nearly $600 million towards eliminating cervical cancer? So, which of the following organization? It is World Bank and UNICEF. Correct. These two organizations, they along with Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, they have pledged nearly $600 million for eliminating cervical cancer. And the funding includes $400 million over three years by World Bank and the rest $180, billion, uh, $180 million from the Bill and Melinda Gates foundation next which country's central bank has recently signed an mou with rbi to promote the use of local currencies of both countries so bank of indonesia and india's uh, central bank of indonesia and reserve bank of india these two organizations they collaborated together and they signed an mou where they will be promoting the use of the local currencies of both these countries in order to enhance the trade between them so, Indonesian Rupiah, that is IDR, and INR, that is Indian Rupees, the trade between these two local currencies will be announced under this collaboration. Next, who has been recently named for the Pritzker Architecture Prize 2024? So, Raiken Yamamoto of Japan, right, he has been named as the, uh, named for the Pritzker Architecture Prize. This Pritzker Architect Architecture Prize is the highest honor given in the field of architecture, and Raiken Yamamoto, he became the 53rd laureate to be honored with Pritzker Architecture Prize and the 9th Japanese architecture to win this prize. This prize includes a cash prize of 100,000 US dollar and a bronze medallion. Next, in March, 
वडोदरा म्यूनसिपल कॉर्पोरेशन दैट इज़ अ सिविक बॉडी ऑफ गुजरात हैज रेज डैश अमाउंट बाय इशूइंग एशियाज फर्स्ट सर्टिफाइड ग्रीन म्यूनसिपल बॉन्ड फॉर सस्टेनेबल वाटर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर सो वडोदरा म्यूनसिपल कॉर्पोरेशन दैट इज़ द सिविक बॉडी ऑफ गुजरात इट हैज़ रेज हाउ मच अमाउंट इट रेज हंड्रेड करोड़ रुपीज़ इट रेज हंड्रेड करोड़ रुपीज़ बाय इशूइंग एशियाज फर्स्ट सर्टिफाइड ग्रीन म्यूनसिपल बॉन्ड फॉर सस्टेनेबल वाटर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर राइट एंड हेयर the coupon rate or the interest rate that will be provided here will be of 7.9% next which state government has recently launched india's first government owned ott platform c space and we have discussed this multiple times this c space is of which state it is of kerala kerala owns this first ott platform c space ott platforms are such as your netflix your amazon prime right and so on correct and it is your kerala state film development corporation that owns this c space who is the chief minister of kerala pinrai vijayan next which country has recently joined nato as an alliance correct as their 32nd member so nato which country became the 32nd member of nato it is sweden sweden became 32nd member of nato north atlantic treaty organization next how many winners have recently won first national creators award presented by prime minister of india narendra modi in march so a total of 23 creators was awarded with the national creators award that was the first ever edition or we can say the inaugural edition of the national creators award right there were 23 winners three were international winners right and 20 in 20 categories they were awarded the event for this where was this held at bharat mandapam that is in new delhi Next is your homework section. First, which institution secured the forty-fifth rank in engineering and technology of Quackerelli Simons World University ranking? Next, recently, which bank became the first private bank to open a branch in Lakshadweep? Third, according to the recent Asian Development Bank report, what is the expected growth rate of the Indian economy in twenty-four twenty-five? Fourth, Vinod Wildlife Sanctuary recently seen in news is located in which state? And fifth, who became who has become the first Indian monk to be honored with the American President's Gold Volunteer Service Award? So these are your five homework question, friends, and I need to see maximum participation from all the students watching this video. That's all for the day, friends. I hope you enjoyed the session, and you can follow us on the YouTube channel as well as apart from YouTube channel, you can go and follow us at Affairs Cloud Telegram channel. And if you have any queries related to the content or the of courses offered to you or the payment which you did on the application you can contact us on the number provided that is 76773862 apart from this friends you can follow us on the facebook as well as on instagram handle that is affairs cloud underscore official also students you can use code vikas10 that will give you extra 10% discount on the courses that you will purchase